Today on Canadian Firearms Review, we're going to be looking at the Remington Versamax. So when you buy this shotgun from the store and you get it from the factory, this is exactly how it comes, right in this box right here. So I'm just going to crack this box open and show you exactly what the gun comes with. So first off, it's nice, uh, hard, hard plastic case. Color is really not that attractive, and you can see it says Remington Verse Max right across the front. It's got four, this little sliding lock levers there, and it has two points you can put your locks on to, for transport. So open it up, and it, the, the case is completely custom to the gun itself. So here you have your, your barrel and your gas system here. You have the rest of the gun right there. That just fits in there nice, all custom. This is an actual uh, molded custom trigger lock that goes right on the trigger lock perfectly. Uh, it's, you can't really use that trigger lock inside the case it's kind of pointless, but it's good if you have it in another sort of case or you have the gun together. It works awesome. This gun actually comes with four separate chokes. Uh, and if you open this little pouch in here, you've got your, your choke wrench. Uh, on the barrel, it actually has uh, fiber optic sights. So there's your, it comes with green came on the actual uh, barrel itself, originally from factory. It also has an orange kind of red and then a white. Um, there's another adapter to adjust the comb. Uh, keys for your lock and then over here in this little bag is uh, shin kits to adjust your length of pull and I don't have my manual in here right now but it also has a spot to put paperwork in your manual right in there perfectly so you can take this gun pack it all up like this store it really nice and neat compact throw it in the back of your trunk take it to the range and you'll have no problem at all so starting at the rear of the gun you have a really thick butt pad that absorbs a lot of the recoil that this shotgun puts in your shoulder and you're still able to put uh, the different shim kits that come in the kit. Uh, moving on up, you have a cheek rest which is very comfortable on your cheek when you're taking sights with this shotgun. And the uh, cool thing about this is that you can actually remove it and you can actually buy the, the medium height or the, or the higher height depending on what, what you like. For me, this, this, uh, fl this flush one, the lowest one, works well for me. It feels really nice in the hand. That's one thing I like about this shotgun. And it's very tactile and it's it's very grippy. So whether you're wearing a glove or your, your hands are wet, it feels really nice in the hands. And uh, what another awesome feature is this safety, a very over large safety. So it's really easy to strike no matter what kind of conditions you're in or what kind of equipment you might be wearing on your hands. Uh, moving on up to the action of the shotgun, you have the bolt handle here and it's, uh, it's kind of contoured to, to, to kind of capture your finger as you pull it back and it's still nice and solid and it's grippy so it's easy to strike it back and have it lock in place um, to the fore end of the shotgun same just like the butt stock with the synthetic very nice tactile uh, grippy material on here and it makes it nice for when you have wet hands so that the shotgun doesn't kind of like slip at your hands when you're shooting those big three three and a half inch loads um, moving on up like i mentioned in the that came with the kit uh, it has the fiber optic sight and with this it, it's easy just to, to pop that up and it comes with the three different colors so factory like I like uh, that came with it is the green you can also put the white in there and you can also put the red in there which makes it awesome to acquire your targets and it actually has this little bead sight right here and you can line that perfectly right up with that and you can be dead on target so like any gun you buy there's going to be a couple things you really like about the shotgun and there might be a couple things that you really don't like about the shotgun and that is exactly what this shotgun is there's a couple things that i love and i'm going to tell you what those are right now as you can see this gun is already drilled and tapped for a scope so if you wanted to you could buy the medium or the high cheek riser put the the rail the rail on put the scope on and you got yourself a slug gun which you take deer hunting um, another thing i really do like about this gun as well is the oversized safety so up here in Canada, all most of our uh, hunting seasons are when it's cold out, so we like to wear gloves. And uh, depending on what, what time of the year it is, the thicker the glove are, is sometimes it's harder to hit the safety. But that's not the case with this shotgun because the safety is so large that you can hit it no matter what every time. And you're not trying to fiddle around looking for that, 
that really tiny kind of tight press safety that you see in most shotguns. And it just makes it really easy to be able to, once you see a bird or once you see a deer, to be able to boom, pop it and take your shot. Uh, moving on, another thing I, I, I really do like about this shotgun is that it can literally shoot any load. I use this for duck hunting and I use this for partridge hunting and I use this for skeet shooting. I put every type of round through it from two and three quarter to three and a half inch target load, uh, big heavy triple BB loads for geese hunting and I've, I've never had a problem. And that's because they have a special type of gas system which regulates the gas that goes, that, uh, that, that, the, that the gun uses based on what, by what shell you have inside the, the chamber. So the only thing that I find is that when you're using like say three inch shells, it's, and, and sometimes even two and three quarter shells, there's so much gas going in there and it's not gonna jam that it spits the empty, the empty uh, shell casing really far. But as long as you're on the right side of the blind and you've got no buddies beside you, it's not a bad deal. And uh, I'm gonna go into a couple things that we found that was a little bit negative about this gun. And that would be this feed tray right here. As you can see, it's not flush with the receiver of the entire gun, which actually looks kind of different. It looks kind of weird, but can actually result in a few problems. I haven't had any problems with reloading, uh, being in the bush with this gun yet, but I've had a couple friends who've shot this and they said they found a problem reloading this because it kind of sticks out really far. And um, when you're trying to reload, especially you have a glove on or something like that, and you're reloading and you're pushing in, well, that feed tray is trying to come up at the same time. And most of these guys are used to lower feed trays like you see in the Mossberg. And they're, they're actually getting their thumbs and their gloves caught in there. And that can make it for, that can make it a real pain to, to reload your shotgun quick. Because when there's birds in the sky, you, you, don't, you want to spend the least amount of time you have to, to reload your shotgun so you can get back to shooting some birds. Um, and then another thing that I found that I've had a miserable problem with actually is this, this uh, locking nut here. Every time I shoot about 10 to 15 rounds, it actually becomes loose. And I've tightened this thing as hard down, as hard as I could. And uh, every time I shoot, it just becomes loose and this forearm starts to shake. So I have to re unload my shotgun, pull it down, tighten it again, get another 10, 15 rounds down range, do the same thing over, retighten it. Um, I, I've checked all the threadings and, and they're not stripped. But, uh, but I found that it's just a big pain that I had to keep doing that. And I don't want to put anything like Loctite on there because I don't want to make anything too permanent because I want to be able to disassemble this gun, put it in the case, or just even do a basic cleaning. So to sum things up, this shotgun does offer a lot of really great features that I mentioned before. But just like I mentioned before, there's a lot of negative features that have been really bothering me, which kind of leaves me torn with this shotgun because this, the, this gun runs about anywhere between eleven to thirteen hundred dollars, which is actually pretty expensive, especially if you're just transferring from a, like a pump shotgun to a semi. And it, it actually, it's kind of leaving me on that borderline where maybe I'm actually going to consider selling this and making some money and actually just kind of going towards a more seven to eight hundred dollar semi-automatic. Um, I, I, I would really recommend everyone to try this gun out before they buy it because I don't believe it would be for everyone. And I think there is just as good shotguns that you can find cheaper. And uh, there, of course, there's always going to be your, your higher end shotguns like, like your Benelli's and stuff like that. But um, I, I believe what this gun offers and the problems that I've had that um, I think you'd be better off actually buying a $7,800 semi-automatic like a Stoger or um, or any of the cheaper Benelli's. So as always guys, subscribe to the video, like the video, be sure to comment because we love to read your comments. Check out our Facebook and Twitter page, and as always, thanks for watching.